Released in early 2016, the iPhone SE was designed for those who prefer smaller phones and utilize the classic iPhone 5 design. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're going to be taking a look at the iPhone SE. Is it still worth buying in 2018? This two-year-old phone has been very popular since it was introduced and is one of my favorite iPhones for one reason, the size. It's the most noticeable design element and one that won't appeal to everybody. It has only a 4-inch display with a resolution of 640 by 1136 and pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. What does this mean? It looks good, colors are fine, and although it's a pretty basic LCD screen, the Retina display results in all contents looking very clean and very crisp. However, the display is small, especially when compared with, say, the iPhone 6 Plus. That being said, this is the entire selling point of this phone. If you're somebody with smaller hands or are just tired of big phones, then this is probably the best phone you can get size-wise. It's made to be used with one hand, and I personally really like it. It's much more comfortable to use than plus-sized iPhones or even my iPhone 10. Okay, glad we got that out of the way. Essentially, if you don't like small phones, avoid the SC. If you do or you don't care, then this might be a good phone for you, so let's move on. The actual body of the iPhone SE is reminiscent of that of the iPhone 5 and 5S so if you've ever used one of those, you know what to expect here. It's made from aluminum and has two glass antenna bands on the back, and I absolutely love the look. It's very classy, and while it's not the most modern look in the world, I personally don't mind. It's very unique and looks a little bit boxy, like it's kind of got the squarish design, as opposed to the very curvy look of most phones in 2018. It's extremely light and it's also very thin, which is a definite plus. Color-wise, we have a few options, being silver, gold, rose gold, and space gray. It's definitely nice to have some variety here. The SE has a lightning charging port on the bottom as well as the elusive headphone jack. Interesting fact, this was actually the last iPhone that released with a headphone jack. So if you enjoy using headphones, you're good here. The speaker on the SE isn't very good, but again it does have the headphone jack, so I'd say that's a pretty decent trade-off. Unfortunately, we are missing some nice features with this design, such as water resistance and wireless charging, but in all honesty, I think those are things most people can live without. The SE, of course, does have the home button, and as a result, Apple's Touch ID, which is always solid. However, this is first-generation Touch ID, which means it's a little bit slower than the iPhone 6s and better. It's good enough. Camera-wise, the iPhone SE is actually very, very good, with a rear 12 megapixel sensor and the ability to shoot in 4K at 30 frames per second. It's actually a very solid setup that will give you great looking photos and video, and is right on par with the iPhone 6s. The selfie camera, on the other hand, is a different story, with only 1.2 megapixels and 720p video recording. This is horrible, it's just awful. So, I mean, unless you really want your selfies to look amazing, it should be fine, uh, and it doesn't look too bad in good lighting, but just keep in mind the selfie camera is nothing to write home about. Battery-wise, the iPhone SE is probably better than you'd expect when looking at raw numbers. The size of it is only 1624 mAh, which isn't anything special, but in real-world performance, it'll get you through the day, and because of the small display, it actually does really well, at least from my personal testing. You're gonna probably need to charge it at night, obviously, but it should be able to handle moderate usage throughout the day without too much worry. Speaking of the battery, it is worth mentioning that Apple does slow down iPhone SEs that have bad batteries, so I'd recommend either buying brand new or being very careful about buying used if this is a concern. When it comes to storage, there are various options here, with 16, 32, 64, and 128 gigabytes. However, Apple no longer sells the 16 and 64 gigabyte options anymore, but you can find them used if you really want to. There's some good selection here, and I definitely avoid the 16 gigabyte models, as this just isn't enough space for most people in 2018. If you take very little photos and video and don't download apps a whole lot, then you're probably going to be okay, but I think the vast majority of people will really appreciate getting at least 32 gigabytes which is now the base model when you're buying new anyways, so just keep that in mind. Something that sets the iPhone SE apart from most phones this size is power. It's actually a very quick little machine. It holds Apple's A9 processor and 2GB of RAM, more than enough for iOS 11 and to handle most tasks. Social media, games, and even more business-oriented apps all fly on this thing, so when it comes to performance, you're going to be fine. iOS 11 is a bit slower than iOS 10 in my personal experience, but I'd say it's still pretty decent and good enough for the average user. Support-wise, the iPhone SE will receive iOS 12, 
12 when that drops later this year, and should also get iOS 13 when that drops in late 2019. So essentially, you have close to three years support left on this guy, being of course, you know, all 2018, all 2019, and most of 2020. And this is all according to Apple's patterns, it could turn out differently. But at the end of the day, you are pretty future-proof with the iPhone SE. In real world use, the iPhone SE is great and feels fluid, something you're going to want from any smartphone. So all in all, the iPhone SE is a very good device in 2018 still. It's only two years old and can handle anything you throw at it with relative ease. But that doesn't mean it's necessarily worth buying, and there's really two more main points we need to look at here, the price and the iPhone SE 2. So uh, let's start with the latter here. The iPhone SE 2 at the time of making this video is only a rumor, but in my personal opinion, it's very likely to happen. If you're watching this in April and it hasn't been announced, it probably won't happen, unless Apple throws it into their September event, which is very unlikely. Typically, they would release this kind of thing in March, as they did with the first iPhone SE. I've done a full video talking about the rumors for the iPhone SE 2, so link to that below if you're interested. But I'll give you a quick summary here so you know it's going to be a minor upgrade, with essentially the biggest thing being the speeds. It is going to be definitely faster. It may also have wireless charging, which would mean a glass back. But the biggest takeaway here is that the iPhone SE 2 will be an incremental upgrade, and it's not going to be anything too major. It's not going to be a mini iPhone 10. it's just going to be more of the same but better. So because of this, it may be a good idea to hold out on buying the iPhone SE until April, just to see what happens. The current iPhone SE is a really nice phone, don't get me wrong, but I think it's important to note that Apple has something new in the pipeline, probably. So let's discuss pricing. The iPhone SE is going to cost you $350 for the unlocked 32GB model on Apple.com, which is actually a very good deal for what you get. However, again, the iPhone SE 2 might be coming out, so it might not be the best idea to buy the first generation. But if I had to guess, the second SE will probably cost more than $350, so it might be worth a buy. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the iPhone SE 2 cost $450 for the base model, although I can't see it getting too much higher than that. So should you buy the iPhone SE in 2018? Well, despite the new model looming, yes, I believe it's still worth it. And where it's really worth it is buying used. You can find them on eBay.com for around $200 worth of relative ease, both used and refurbished. And so honestly, I think this is the way to go. Again, buying new could be a bit risky, but when you're buying used, you're actually fine because the prices probably aren't going to go down too much than what they are now. Or of course, you could just buy on contract, which isn't the worst idea in the world as there are a ton of $0 deals you can find out there. Whether or not you're willing to commit to two years is really up to you. I think at the end of the day, if you're going to get the iPhone SE in 2018, you're going to be happy, but buying used is definitely the way to go. Regardless, I don't think you're going to regret the purchase. Just a quick note here, I do have a couple videos comparing the iPhone SE with different phones, so I'll link those below. The ones I have right now is the iPhone 10 versus the SE, as well as the iPhone 6S versus the SE. I might also have done a few more by the time you're watching this, so I'll have all those linked down below in the description. All right, I think that's it for this video. The iPhone SE is a great phone, and one I've been recommending for the past year, and will probably continue to recommend to everybody. It's just a super solid option considering the price. $200, if you can get it for that, is an amazing deal. In fact, I've even seen it for less than that. So if you're okay with a small phone, the SE is always going to be a very good option. If this video helped you out at all, please consider dropping a like, and don't forget to subscribe if tech is your thing. Comment your thoughts on the iPhone SE below. Is it still worth buying, or should you maybe wait for the new one, if there is even going to be a new one? Let me know what you think. You can find my social media down in the description, and with that all being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.